Can everyone hear me good? It's all good? All right, well, I'd like to welcome you all. I want to thank you all for coming in here today. My name is Eugene Kogosov, and I am from the Counseling Center here. I'm a psychology intern. And today what I'm going to be presenting on is on a topic that I'm fairly passionate about, and that is on burnout. Um, it's more more uh, specifically burnout among undergraduate undergraduate students and graduate students. Um, something for me as a as being a part of a clinical doctoral program, I know that in the past I've experienced symptoms of burnout. I've experienced high amounts of stress being in a doctoral program, and I totally understand. Also, going from an undergraduate program before that, that it can be highly stressful. And so that is why, for me, this, passion, this, this topic is really um, important because I was able to use some of the strategies we'll talk about later, incorporate in my life, and it really helped me cope with some of that stress. And they really feel like stress, as you will see, is really prevalent among uh, college populations. And so my hope is that you all will take something positive and something out of this today. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. Cool. So before we start talking about burnout, I had a clip I wanted to show you all that just really shows the alarming rates of stress among uh, students, undergraduate students and graduate students. And I think this clip will kind of help exhibit that. So. Anxiety is the number one thing that students come into the counseling center with. Uh, no. Bound. Uh, yeah. That's on. This is at a hundred. Technical difficulties. Why are college students so stressed out? Anxiety is the number one thing that students come into the counseling center with. Sorry, guys. Anxiety is the number one thing that students come into the counseling center with. Why are college students so stressed out? Tonight, The Ohio State University says a record number of counseling appointments were made last school year. New eye-opening numbers show more students than ever before are seeking help for anxiety. nbc 4s Katie Farrell is live on campus tonight telling us why. Katie? Good evening, Mike Colleen. 35,000 counseling appointments were made here at Ohio State last year. That equates to more than half of the student population. And one reason for the increase, the school says students are spending more time on these and less time with each other. Look up. That's the message from Ohio State to stressed out students. Students are coming in with higher rates of anxiety and depression, more so than any other time previously. The American College Health Association says 80% of college students felt overwhelmed by all they had to do in the past year. Dr. Mickey Sharma, director of OSU's Counseling and Consultation Services, says part of the reason why is technology. We've got this generation of students that has been leading very scheduled and hectic lives for a long period of time. They've also been doing more communication and spending more time communicating through electronic means or spending more time with phones, tablets, computers. More time plugged in means less time socializing. So the coping skills and the resiliency that we want to see in students is just not exactly where we'd like it to be. We spent time on campus asking students, are you stressed out? The answer was almost always the same. Yeah, this is uh, definitely my most stressful semester. It's just like a rush of overwhelmness of classes, homework, quizzes, online stuff. I mean, 
mean, I take anxiety about medicine, so like, I feel like, yeah. Students admit they feel like they can't turn off, in part because so much of their classwork is done online. You have to be on your phone at all times. College from when my dad went to college now has definitely changed 10 times. Literally everything's online. Students also worry about the future. We're stuck with debt for the past, like, the next 10 years, and we can't even pay for that. Dr. Sharma says all students need a break. We live in this fast-paced society where technology makes everything immediately available, but looking at all of it continuously is not helpful. And Dr. Sharma says Ohio State's numbers really mirror what's happening on the national scale. He says one piece of good news is that the stigma surrounding mental health is decreasing, and that's another reason more students are seeking out that help. Live on campus, Katie Farrell, NBC4. All right, very interesting. Thank you, Katie. And students can meet with counselors for free at Ohio State University. Counseling and Consultation Service offers everything from psychological testing and group counseling to help with relationship problems and eating concerns as well. To learn more, go to our website, NBC4i.com. We have a link and additional resources posted online. Okay. So, 80% of, as it was noted, 80% of college students are overwhelmed. By a show of hands, who here has been overwhelmed recently? That looks like 100% to me, which is really reflective of what they're talking about here, which is why I pointed out in the beginning, these are sort of alarming rates, and it makes sense. It talked about some of the causes of stress, such as using our phones more, which then would decrease the likelihood of getting any type of social support, talking to others, and as we will see, talking to others is one great way to kind of reduce stress. But if we're not talking to others, then that increases the likelihood of stress. And they also mention the effects of burnout. They, the, the, the doctor mentioned that uh, students are coming in with higher rates of depression and anxiety. Both are effects of burnout, as we'll see. So I felt like that clip really captured what's going on in today's time. So, what is burnout? And burnout really, as it kind of talks about here on this slide, it identifies it as prolonged stress or chronic stress. And we'll talk a little bit more later on about the differences between stress and burnout because there are differences between stress and burnout. When it comes to burnout, it really looks at the chronic uh, side of it. Uh, uh, amounts of stress over time that lead you feeling, as it says here, exhausted. And when it says exhausted, it talks about having so much exhaustion where you have no more to give to your work, no more to give for family members, to friends, in various aspects of your life because you're just so emotionally drained. The other piece that burns out one of the aspects or dimensions, as I mentioned uh, here, uh, is cynicism. And that is just being kind of distant towards your work, having this attitude of like, I just don't care anymore. I don't, I have low motivation to kind of care, to kind of continue going on um, towards your work, again, towards fans, uh, uh, friends, family members, loved ones, just in general all of a sudden feeling like it doesn't matter. And the other piece of it is uh, reduced personal accomplishment as well. So feelings of burnout, uh, burnout feelings of burnout can really uh, increase the likelihood that you just don't feel like you're personally achieving in your school, in your work. Um, maybe you feel like anything that you're getting, good grades that you're getting are not being recognized. So then maybe you start feeling a little bit incompetent. I'm wondering, as I kind of put this up, if anyone has ever experienced anything or if anything I just said kind of resonates with anyone. Show of hands. Okay. So certainly several of you, which again, very reflective of the clip I showed. Moving on, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's important to look at uh, the differences between stress and burnout, because 
it, 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 they overlap, right? And someone may think that burnout is stress, but in fact, they're different. And, that, and here's why, and here's, I put a bit of uh, areas that they are different. Whereas in stress, um, when you become a little too stressed, you might become a little too over-engaged. Whereas when you start to feel burned out, as I mentioned earlier, feeling distant, you start to disengage more. Um, you can become a little bit more overreactive based on your emotions. If it's, you know, heightened levels of anger, for, for instance, that stress may cause, you may feel, uh, again, over, uh, overreaction. There might be an overreaction with anger. Whereas when you're feeling uh, more burnt out, the emotions are, as it says here, blunted. They don't appear as much. They're not coming up. And you can read the rest of them. There are various differences here, but it really kind of points out the various differences between stress and burnout. And again, like I said, chronic stress leads to burnout. Everyone definitely experiences stress on a daily basis. And this is normal. Students, uh, that's, that's to be expected to have stress. It's when it becomes chronic and long-term is when then it could really impact your functioning in various ways, your relationships, work, so on. Okay. So here I'm going to ask now you all uh, what you think some of the physical signs are, the emotional signs and behavioral signs of, burn, of what it means to be burnt out. So I asked earlier if you all had experienced sort of uh, you know, prolonged stress and feelings of burnout, and all of you raised your hands. So I'm wondering, in your experiences, what are some of the, and you can just name any of them. It could be either physical, emotional, or behavioral. Just name off some of the signs to any of them that you may have felt while feeling burnt out. Overly tired. Excellent. I'm sorry, one more time. Not chatting. Not chatting. So maybe isolating yourself, maybe a little bit withdrawal. Yeah, that's a good point. Any emotional signs anyone can think of? Excessive crying. Yeah. Please. Headaches. Yes. Yes. A common physical sign, as we will see. Please. Numb. Not feeling anything at all. Sure. Eating more. Yeah, potentially overeating or undereating. Mm -hmm. Any others? All right, well, I'll give it to you. There's no pop quiz or anything. So, as far as feeling, someone mentioned feeling tired. Yes, feeling tired. Someone mentioned headaches. Absolutely. You may experience muscle pain, sickness, appetite. Someone mentioned sleep difficulties. While feel, anyone experience any difficulties falling asleep, waking up, or maintaining sleep while feeling burnt out? I have, and I see some nods, some hands. Uh, emotional signs, feeling like a failure. Has anyone felt this way? I'm seeing some nods. I'm seeing some raised hands. Um, and that might be sometimes even tough to admit, right? As a student, feeling like a failure because as a student, we want to succeed and do well. But sometimes it comes to a point where we may feel this way. That can be common. Lack of motivation, feeling sense of helplessness, as we talked about, detached. We talked about being cynical, decreased satisfaction in your own work. It happens. Someone mentioned withdrawal from your friends, being less chatty or chatting less with friends. Isolating yourself is one way. Procrastinating, I definitely can uh, resonate. Anyone else can resonate with some procrastination? 
Um, definitely. Potentially using alcohol and drugs. Someone mentioned eating more, being frustrated. Maybe skipping work, maybe not going to class, maybe arriving to class late, maybe leaving early, maybe not even caring about class. It can happen once the stress builds up to a point where there's just that, again, that cynicism, distant, feeling distant from your work. Uh, I see some people writing down, it. let me know if I'm going too fast, by the way. I don't want it to go too fast, so if there, there is, please let me know. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the, uh, the signs and symptoms. Now, and we saw in the video clip as well, some causes. What are some, in your opinions, causes to burnout? I'm sorry? Procrastination can be one, absolutely. So, and you bring up a good point. They can overlap, right? Signs and symptoms can also overlap. Feeling more depressed, if you started feeling depressed, can lead to burnout as well. So it could be one or the other. So that's, that's a great point. Anyone else? Things that could lead to burnout? I mentioned in the video, using too much technology, for instance, financial stress, perhaps. I'm seeing some nods. Right. And like you have no control. Again, we've been over a few of these. Feeling like uh, it's, there's a lot of pressure in your jobs. Anyone that may work here um, may have experienced that, where especially when you're really stressed, it feels like the expectations from your job can be very demanding. And that can just, again, exacerbate the stress. Work is mon monot monotonous. Talked about that. Lack of self-care, which really can happen when we're feeling too stressed. We're not eating properly. We're not sleeping properly. Uh, we're not engaging in relationships. Sometimes we take on a little bit too much. Maybe at times we take on too many units. Sometimes individuals are under scholarships or maybe there's pressure from parents perhaps to do well. So that might lead to the sense of, okay, let me take on a bunch of units. Let me show how good I am. Let me, uh, let me prove to my parents or friends or whoever how well I can do. And sometimes we may take too many units and then suffer the consequences for it because maybe we overdid it. Overuse of social media. Some, sometimes individuals can really identify themselves or consider themselves as perf being professionistic or really having professionistic uh, tendencies. And then that means I have to do well all the time. And if I'm not, well, then that's going to cause a lot of stress, perhaps. Other ones. Okay. Talked about the causes of burnout, and here I'm going to let you guys off the hook and not ask you the effects this time. I just have it. Um, and we already kind of went through these, and some of these overlap, as you noticed. Physical issues like codes and headaches, mental health issues like they said in the clip, anxiety and depression, which is becoming, and we'll look at statistics in a few, in a few moments, um, but that's increasing. The rates of, of Students uh, struggling with mental health issues such as depression and anxiety, that's continuing to increase. As they said, something like 35,000 students went to counseling at Ohio University, um, which those records weren't there years before, but now it is increasing. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Behavioral issues, like we talked about. Okay. Found a stat here, and I thought it was very interesting. And pay attention to the first one, attended counseling for mental health concerns. Um, now, this one goes up to 2013. It is now 2018. Um, I can imagine that that percentage is even higher now than it was in 2013, and that's five years ago. And it went from 45% to 48%. That's a three, uh, three percentage increase, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that is 
good amount of people every single year going. That's just showing that more and more students are facing mental health issues. Uh, taking medication, being hospitalized for mental health concerns, that's increasing all across the board. If you're looking at it, every single one of them uh, is pretty much increasing over time, which really does say something about kind of what's happening. Okay, graduate, any graduate students here? Okay, a couple. Uh, so this, you know, and I'm a graduate student as well, being part of a, a doctoral program, I can attest to this, I've already mentioned this. We are not, uh, it's not exclusive to undergraduate students, not at all. Graduate students also experience burnout. Um, here are a couple examples. Medical students, for instance, 35% reported uh, experiencing burnout. Clinical graduate students, and I'm part of that, uh, being in the clinical psychology program, 82% reported um, anxiety, 50% reported depression. That is a high number. That's fairly, that, that is alarming. Um, so I found that very interesting. There's also studies that show that there is a relationship, a negative relationship between burnout and the more burnout there is, the more stress, the lower GPA goes, which makes sense, but studies have shown that this indeed can happen. Perceived performance, the way you, uh, the way you perceive your own performance on tests, exams, ex essays, etc., you feel like you do worse when you are under a lot of stress. Here I found something interesting. So the Maslach uh, burnout inventory uh, was created in order to measure burnout based on those three items that I mentioned, those three dimensions, exhaustion, cynicism, and uh, professional efficacy or student achievement uh, as it said, or achievement uh, as it said earlier, uh, really the same thing. Um, it was then adjusted for students to see if they are experiencing burnout. And this is a good uh, measure. It does cost, though, if, if any of you ever think about maybe taking it. It does cost, which is why I didn't put any samples on here because I didn't want to take from the, from the test. But I do think that if, it may be worth your time and money if you do have the money, and I totally recognize that you may not. But if you do, it might be worth looking into if you're like, am I really burnt out? I'm not sure. This can be really good for self-awareness. And that's one of the ways that you can either prevent or reduce, uh, reduce uh, you know, symptoms of burnout by being aware that you do in fact have it. Sometimes students can go on and on for months or weeks or whatever it is, not knowing that they're burnt out and yet their work is impacted, yet their relationships are impacted. But they don't know that because they don't know they're burnt out. As a student, it might seem like you're a fish in water because being a student is so stressful in general. So you may not know, but it's important to know. Uh, there was several cultural factors that I wanted to uh, address here. And it talks a lot about right here, as, as you notice, various ethnic minority groups, individuals coming from lower SES, individuals that are uh, physically disabled or have learning disabilities. As it states here, they do experience higher rates of having issues in colleges. Non-traditional students, such as individuals that are a little bit older or may have children or single parents, students like that. Also, um, being that they are either older or you know, full-time employed, that comes with its own stresses. And then for anyone that may know any non-traditional students or maybe you are a non-traditional student, you, that, you may resonate with that. Going back to individuals uh, from uh, minority uh, populations or ethnic minority populations, it talked about how those individuals typically score higher when it comes to binge drinking, uh, score higher when it comes to depression, when it comes to loneliness. Um, and part of the reason for that, as it's noted in the next uh, uh, point, is the racial, perceived racial discrimination or actual discrimination. And that's something that's been happening more and more as we've been witnessing on college campuses. 
Here at K-State, we've had uh, various uh, hate crimes occur um, and all across the nation, throughout universities, uh, hate crimes happening more and more. And that is definitely towards or can be towards individuals that come from ethnic uh, minority backgrounds. And thus, it is no wonder why perhaps they sh do show higher rates of depression, binge drinking, and so on. Um, at the same time, students may also feel like it is unpopular or it is a negative, people would have like a negative view of them if they were to access mental health treatment. Mental health treatment or getting it, it can be scary. Admitting that you, maybe you need help, that's a scary thought, absolutely. And so what would my family think? What would my friends think about me? These are all things to consider. And so part of that is, I don't want to seem like I'm crazy, so I don't want to go to therapy. And so thus, that may kind of reduce the likelihood of some students going to therapy. And instead, maybe going to families, their family members, some individuals that come from collectivistic cultures might just want to keep it within the family and not kind of uh, talk about their issues outside with a stranger. They might go to friends, they might go to uh, church or religious type of organizations to deal or manage with their issues, but not therapy. Luckily though, as the clip said earlier on, that the stigma is reducing, which is fantastic because individuals um, are more, now more likely to get the help that they need. I also looked at the highest attrition rates among ethnic minority groups. Uh, and this is not for counseling, this is for universities, students that are dropping out at higher rates. And as it's noted here, the highest among them are ident individuals identify as American Indians, African Americans, and Latino, Latina, Latinas or Latinx. Um, those are the highest. And again, this correlates with what I just said. Individuals from minority, ethnic minority populations experience higher rates of depression, anxiety, been drinking, so on, which may then increase the likelihood of them dropping out of school altogether. Okay, back to you guys. I've done a good amount of talking. Now that we talked about some of the causes and effects of burnout, I'm wondering, can anyone think of in their own experiences what they've done to maybe manage or reduce stress? Checklist. That's a good one. Okay, so engaging in some pleasurable activities. Yeah, social support, big, big time. Please. Yeah. That is such a great point because when you're feeling more burnt out, that might lead to, like we said, procrastination, right? Avoid the work. But actually, sometimes actually getting through the work in a gradual way can really kind of heighten or increase the level of satisfaction. And then also give you some more free time later on. So that's, yeah, that's a good point. Any other ideas of ways to reduce stress? I know for, yeah, please. Yeah, physical exercise. It's been noted in literature time and time again that physical exercise is correlated with just better well being, mental well being, physical well being. I have a dog back home in LA, so uh, that's someone, or someone, my, uh, playing with my dog really helps me. I don't know if anyone has any pets, but that's, that can be nice. Okay, I won't leave you all in suspense. I know you're all on the tip of your chairs wondering what are some of the other ones. Someone mentioned relationships, connecting with coworkers. And by the way, also like in your job, I also realize 
that sometimes the coworkers can invoke the stress or the anxiety. So sometimes it's not necessary that you're going to your coworkers because they could be one of the causes to the burnout. But it depends. Joining the club here, we have various organizations, clubs. A feeling of belonging can really help. Helping others. Reframing the way you think of the situation. Using reframe um, about, for instance, if, if you're not doing well in school, what are some potential ways that you can maybe look at it in a different way that shine some light on it? Is there any silver linings? Potentially, maybe, you know, I, you know, I'm not doing so well right now, but I can do better is one way potentially you can re use a reframe. Taking time off, taking breaks, like they said in the, in the clip, take breaks, drink in moderation, avoid substances. We're not done yet. There was so many that I couldn't fit them all on one screen, and I didn't want to make it such small font that you can read. So part two. Seeking emotional support, someone said exactly that. Engaging in humor is a big one. Laughing, going to a comedy club, just laughing with your friends, watching a funny movie, that might do the trick. Practicing mindfulness, we'll get into a little bit of that later on when we get to resources. Being around, does anyone like to be around nature? Does anyone find that calming? I see a few hands. Absolutely, a great way. Anyone ever kept a journal? I see some notes. Baking, reading, you mentioned that. Okay. What do we have here? Some things that you can, or some places you can access here. So a lot of the stress might come from academic issues um, or, you know, just issues with professors, issues with grades. That, that's a common issue by students. And so Office of Student Life, Academic Achievement Center are places potentially that you can go to to kind of maybe help with that. And when you are feeling stressed out and you're feeling overwhelmed, as it said, 80% of students are, according to that clip, um, the Counseling Center is another great resource that you can access. And sometimes individuals may not want or be comfortable with individual or group counseling, a service that we do provide. That's okay to be anxious about it. We have, if you're not feeling like doing that, it doesn't mean that you have to do that, but also not get help. You can still get help and not go to counseling. So for instance, we have Feel Better Fast, feel free workshops that really helps you with stress management and emotional, uh, uh, feeling, uh, emotional regulation. Uh, free mindfulness sessions. This is a cheap plug, I admit, but every Wednesday at 12 to one at the counseling center, we do offer mindfulness and meditation uh, meetings free. You drop in, you don't sign in anything, drop in whenever you want. If you need to leave early, that's fine as well. Um, and it's been heavily researched that engaging in mindfulness really does help with reducing stress. So something to think about. Stress management workshops online, we have those as well. If you're not comfortable going to the center, you can find helpful tips. The cat chats themselves here that we have an archive on our counseling center, various uh, videos, great videos on various mental health topics, academic anxiety, relationship issues, uh, mindfulness, um, just a, an array of various uh, topics that can be really helpful. So, and like I said, clubs, organizations, uh, joining them, a sense of belonging, that can also be uh, provide um, some stress relief, being able to kind of feel like you belong to uh, somewhere, a club or organization. So those are some, it's not limited to those. There are definitely others. Uh, uh, there's other resources here on campus and in the community. These are not just all of them, but these are just some as well. And with that, I want to thank you for coming and listening to my presentation on burnout. I appreciate all of your uh, engagement during that, that was fantastic and now i'm wondering i'll leave it to you one more time if you have any questions or comments about anything that we talked about
I've literally talked about all of it and there's like, I've, I've, I've done such a comprehensive job and like, there's no more. It's like, I know everything there is to know about burnout ever. Uh, if you're not feeling, by the way, if any of you are not really feeling comfortable, like speaking up, you definitely are more than welcome to come, uh, come speak to me afterwards privately. If you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, feel free to come to me if you don't have any questions or comments right now. Uh, going once, going twice, sold. All right. Well, then in that case, we will end our presentation. Again, I want to thank you all for joining me here today. I hope, honestly, that you were able to take something out of this presentation. And my hope is that you're able to incorporate something from this presentation, incorporating your lives to live more st uh, stress-free days. Be a little bit more stress-free. Okay, thank you all.